We're going to consider an inductor in a uh, AC circuit and for an inductor uh, the relationship we're going to start from and so this is from the textbook is that the voltage across the inductor is going to be the inductance L times the time rate of change of the current. And so this is telling us that the voltage uh, across the inductor is going to be then proportional to the slope of the current. Um, so if we take the voltage across the inductor as our starting point, we're going to define the phase relative to the voltage. That voltage is going to be some amplitude, and it varies as sine of the driving angular frequency times time. Then the current in our circuit is going to be the voltage amplitude over driving angular frequency and the inductance. And it goes as sine of driving angular frequency times time, and then it's offset by pi over 2, or 90 degrees. Um, this pair of relationships, we try to remember that the voltage is ahead of the current for an inductor from our mnemonic of Eli, uh, the Iceman. So Eli is the EMF is going to lead the current for an inductor. And we see what this looks like and think about these plots in terms of our fundamental relationship that the voltage across the inductor is proportional to the slope of the current. Um, if we make plots of voltage across the inductor as a function of time, and then parallel to it, the current as a function of time. The voltage is just a sine wave. like that over one period and we want to highlight a few special points here when the voltage is maximum when the voltage is minimum and when the voltage is going through zero both with a negative slope and when it has a positive slope So when the voltage is a maximum is when you're going to have the greatest slope for the current and a positive slope. So this has to correspond to on a sine wave when it's passing through zero to indicate the slope there this minimum value of the voltage is going to correspond to the most negative slope. So that's when the current is going through zero and with that slope. All right, so now when the voltage is, voltage is zero, we're going to see how those points lie. Uh, so this initial point, when t equals zero, the voltage is zero. That's because the current is uh, has no slope at that time, and this voltage is all positive, so this has to be an upward slope for the current, and it's periodic, so this has to be the same value. The zero in the middle for the voltage, again, that's going to be a point where the slope of the current is zero, uh, but this is going to be when the current is going through 
it's maximum. So we'll try to connect that together into a more or less smooth pot. It's the greatest looking sine wave, but the current is also sinusoidal as a function of time, and um, it is shifted uh, by a fourth of a phase or pi over two. Uh, so this point is matching up with what the voltage was back there in terms of its phase. And so from the plots you can see that indeed for an inductor the voltage is leading the current. The voltage is zero when the current is minimum, the voltage is max when the current is zero, and on and on. If uh, we want to look at the relationships for the amplitude of the current through our inductor, we can identify that this combination is going to have to equal the current amplitude. And we want to write this in a form that looks something like uh, an Ohm's law for an inductor, which would tell us that the voltage amplitude is the current amplitude times what we're going to define as the inductive reactance and this is going to tell us then that the current amplitude is the voltage amplitude divided by the inductive reactance and looking at what we have um, we can find that that means that the inductive reactance is the driving angular frequency times 